Today I want to talk about a very important topic <coughs> and I just want to go over the verses in a quick way without going into much details. But a lot of people have asked me recently, I think um, because of some questions that were asked, that is there any mention of the Mahdi in the Quran? And also I think there was an interview that I did recently with the end of time, uh, end game eschatology. Uh, they also asked about this question, so I started thinking about it, and so certain verses of the Quran came to my mind, which I want to share with you. Now, these verses, now there's two types of dalils. You know, one is, uh, it is, yani, uh, that it is, for example, if somebody says to me, uh, what does the Quran say about prayers? I can say, well, here's the verse. It says, aqimus salah, establish the prayers. What does it talk? It says in the words of the Quran itself, establish the prayers. This is Dalalatun Nas. But sometimes something is said indirectly. It is not said directly. And these two distinctions have to be made clear. That sometimes the Quran will mention something, but not directly. But the Quran will say something indirectly. So all of the verses that we're studying today are not a direct reference to the word Mahdi or his Jama'ah. No. They're an indirect indication of a, uh, a of this particular scenario that we're going to talk about that has to deal with the Mahdi. We're going to look at it from many different angles, from many different verses of the Quran. So, the first thing that a person has to understand that what does the Mahdi represent? He represents guidance. What is the guidance? Because that's what the word Mahdi means. What does guidance mean? What does this idea mean? It means that he will be doing things according to the Quran and according to the beloved Prophet ﷺ. That's what it means. Now, what does that mean? That means his jama'ah that he will have with him will have the qualities of a jama'ah mentioned in Qur'an. And he will represent those qualities mentioned in Qur'an in par excellence compared to any other jama'ah that will try to emulate those verses of the Qur'an. This is an assumption, of course, but once we get into it, you'll see how these things relate to one another. The first verse that relates to uh, the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that when does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make people a leader? Okay, when does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make people a leader of the world? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions here about his sunnah when the people of Bani Israel were being oppressed. Their sons were being killed and their daughters were being left uh, to live. <coughs> so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about that, that why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose these people? Because Allah said, ونريد بعد عود بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ونريد أن نمنع على الذين يستضعفوا في الأرض and we desired Allah said I desired and what Allah desires He does right فعل لما يريد Allah does whatever He desires نريد أن نمنع على الذين يستضعفوا those people that became weak in earth those that you see strong today will tomorrow be weak and those that you see weak will be strong. So we wanted those people that had been oppressed in the land. Okay. Naja'alahum. That we will make them a'immatan. We will make them the imams. وَنَجْعَلَهُمُ الْوَارِثِينَ And we will make them the inheritors of those lands that today are occupied by the kings. By the oppressors. So what does this uh, tell us? There's a sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that many times that how many small groups overcome a large group? Now, why is this? How does this relate to Mahdi? I'll come to in a second. But first, we have to understand a sunnah of Allah. That Allah allows the people that are oppressed to become the inheritors of the land. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows the people that are oppressed to become the imams of the people, the leader. They have the guidance now. The guidance is with them. And they use that guidance to reach the position that they're in. Because if you have guidance, then what? You will be successful in this world. And you'll be successful in the next world. You will be the imams of this world. And you will have falah and success in the next world. Okay? So this is the first sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That means that if the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reaches a point 
where they are extremely oppressed. When that extreme oppression occurs, where so much killing has happened, that there is nothing left but a dead body of the Ummah, okay? then at that time is the time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send a process of revival. And there will be a new new a'imma imams amongst them. New imams, new leadership will emerge amongst them, amongst the people that were oppressed. This will be different from the leadership of the oppressed. Because the leadership of the oppressed is perpetuating the oppression and continuing the oppression so that they will not be the leaders. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we will do a favor to them. Again, before I move, the sunnah of Allah is very important to know. وَنُرِيدُ أَن نُمُنَّ عَلَى الَّذِينَ اسْتَضْعِفُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ And we will do a favor. Not that you deserved it. Because you became oppressed by your own stupidity sometimes. وَنُرِيدُ أَن نُمُنَّ عَلَى الَّذِينَ اسْتَضْعِفُوا عَلَى الَّذِينَ اسْتَضْعِفُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ those who became weak on the earth, نَجْعَلَهُمْ We will make them أَئِمَّةً We will make them the leaders. وَنَجْعَلَهُمُ الْوَارِثِينَ And they will become the inheritors of the land. Okay. Let us go to the next verse of the Qur'an on this issue. And so, the question to ask is, this is the sunnah of Allah that's general. But does this sunnah also apply to the Mahdi as understood in traditional Islam? Will Arabia be in shambles? Will Medina be in desolation? Yes. The Prophet said a dog will peel, pee by one of the pillars of the masjid of the Prophet ﷺ. And there will be no one there to pray. In complete desolation. Kharab ul yathrib, the Prophet said. Yathrib, will, it will become Yathrib again, and even that at its worst. <coughs> In another verse of the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when Allah gives, makes them the imma, when Allah makes these people have power, what does Allah demand from them? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, وَمَا لَكُمْ What is wrong with you? And remember, this happened at the time of the Prophet. They were weak and then they were given power. And they were asked this question. But this question is for every true jama'ah, every true jama'ah that's on justice, that has the power to do so, that has the right to do so. وَمَا لَكُمْ لَا تُقَاتِلُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ What is wrong with you? That you don't fight in the cause of Allah. Because... You better fight in the cause of Allah because mustada'afin, they are weak and oppressed. Min rijal amongst the men. Wa nisa, and amongst the women. And amongst the wildan, amongst the children. Alladhina yakuluna, those who say, praying in their suffering to Allah. They say, Rabbana akhrijna min hadhihi al-qariyata zalima. Ahluha, oh Allah, please bring us out of this oppressive city. This oppressive state. This city and the wrongdoers in this city give us a, a, a release from them. Who is going to go from city to city, from land to land, freeing the people and bringing justice? رَبَّنَا أَخْرِجْنَا مِنْ هَذِهِ الْقَرْيَةَ الظَّالِمَ أَحْلُهَا وَجَعَلْ لَنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ وَلِيًّا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent for us a wali, a protector. وَجَعَلَّنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ نَصِيرًا And Allah give to us from yourself, your special favor to us, a, 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 a support system, a help. So, number one, Allah helps the weak and oppressed. Number two, when Allah helps the weak and oppressed, what do they do? They help the other weak and oppressed. And they are the answer to the call of prayers and supplication of those that are oppressed amongst the men and the women and the children. رَبَّنَا أَخْرِجْنَا مِنْ هَذِهِ الْقَرْيَةَ ظَالِمَ أَهْلُهَا Allah give us a release from the oppression of this city. 
This is what the, the Sahaba did when they entered Syria, when they entered Palestine, when they entered Egypt, when they entered Iraq. People were fed up of the taxes in all these places. وَجَعَلْ لَنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ وَلِيًّا Oh Allah, send for us a wali, a protector, an imam, a mahdi. You can say from a symbolic perspective, not as that person, but from a symbolic perspective, Umar radiallahu anh was the mahdi who was sending the armies to these places. وَجَعَلْنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ نَصِيرًا And give us, O oh Allah, a special support and help from yourself. This is the Nisa. This is the Sunnah of Allah. This is the Sunnah of Allah that when those people that are weak, they're given power, they're asked to free other people that are also weak. Okay. Then what else do we learn? We learn another thing. That when we look at the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, we find, and I'll show you the hadith of the Prophet on this, but that there will be an army sent to attack the Kaaba. And so, this is where Surah Al-Fil comes in. Because Allah is telling us in Surah Al-Fil that the Kaaba will be protected. First, it was protected by the birds. And according to the hadith, the next, because Kaaba, according to the the signs of the Day of Judgment in Badaya Nihaya that Imam Ibn Kathir has recorded, the Kaaba will also be in shambles. Of course, if Medina is in shambles, then Mecca will also be in shambles, and this is what Imam Ibn Kathir has recorded. So Mecca will be in shambles, Medina will be in shambles. And there will be an army coming to attack Mecca. And at that time, the Mahdi will come to checkmate that Roman army that will be coming at that time, according to the Hadith. The, the army coming from the direction of where, from from Syria, coming forward. Okay, so <clears throat> we know that this Surah Al-Fil will take place again, possibly, in different shapes and different forms, which I'm not going to go into detail, but I want to show another verse of the Qur'an that mentions the same thing, and then I'll tell you the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. Allah says in ayah number 114 of Surah Al-Baqarah specifically about the masajid of Allah and the mother of the masajids is the Kaaba. Allah said, "Waman adlamu mimman mana'a masajid Allah." Who is the one? And over here it's referring to Mecca because the the believers were being prevented from praying in the Masjid Al-Haram which is Mecca. And so Allah says, وَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ Who is more unjust and more oppressive? مِمَّا مَنَعَ مَسَاجِدَ Allah Then the one who stops people from the masjids of Allah. أَنْ يَذْكُرُوا فِيهَا اسْمُهُ And that they remember the name of Allah in that masjid. وَسَعَى فِي خَرَابِهَا خراب خراب الْيَثْرِبْ خَرَابِهَا That they struggle to desolate and ruin the the house of Allah. Ulaika, those people, they're being warned. Don't try to do that to my house. Ulaika ma kana lahum an yadkhuluha. For them, it is a warning that don't enter at illa khaifin, except you should be in a great state of fear for what you're about to attempt to do. Walahum fi dunya khizyun, and they will have complete humiliation in this world وَلَهُمْ فِي الْآخِرَةِ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ and they will have a very severe punishment in the hereafter. In this way, it was true in the time of the Prophet and it was true in other times of Islamic history but certainly will be true in the end of times with the Mahdi. Let us look at the saying of the Prophet ﷺ on this subject. So now let me give you a small hadith lesson that's very important. Sometimes it's a hadith that's not directly understood. What is it talking about? Who is this talking about? When is this talking about? But you can get an idea when you look at the title given to that chapter by the muhaddisin. So for example, you'll find this hadith in Kitab al-Mahdi of Imam Abu Daud's book, Kitab al-Mahdi, in the Sunan of Imam Daud. Okay, I'm just going to read the English. Umm Salma radiallahu anha asks the Prophet sallallahu about a certain time, meaning Kitab al-Mahdi, about the Mahdi. How will a man who comes against his will 
swallowed up by the earth. Now I'm going to explain to you what this is referring to. The Messenger of Allah replied, All will be swallowed up, but each will be raised according to his intentions on the Day of Judgment. Meaning, as you'll see, the next hadith makes it more clear, that the army of the Romans when it goes, or the armies of this other side, not the room, room mentioned in Quran, but the room mentioned in hadith, when these people, they go against the Kaaba, they will be swallowed up in a place called Bayda, in the desert of the of Arabia. Okay, they'll be because they're taking all, all the oil, so they'll be like swallowed in. You can say, okay. So now, uh, this is one hadith on this subject. Now let's look at the other hadith. So basically, what Umm Salma is saying that the Prophet is saying that the army will be swallowed up, and with it will be good and bad people. And Umm Salma says, even the good and bad people, the Prophet, yes, the people will be raised according to their intention. But when the earth swallows, it's going to take the good and the bad. Okay? The same thing is mentioned in this hadith of the Prophet. And perhaps there are um, those among them who are averse to it, meaning they don't want to be there, but they're forced to be there. And the Prophet says, well, they'll be raised according to the intentions that they have on the Day of Judgment. Another hadith in Riyadh al Salihin. The Prophet ﷺ said, an army will raid the Kaaba, and when it reaches a desert land, all of them will be swallowed by the earth. This is the same event of the Mahdi that's mentioned in the Abu Dawud book. Uh, she asked, O Messenger of Allah, and this is now instead of Umm Salma, the narrator is Aisha. So it's possible the Prophet mentioned the same thing more than once. Or both the wives were there together when this was being mentioned. They were both asking the same question. She has said, O Messenger of Allah, why all of them? He answered, all of them will be swallowed by the earth, but they will be raised for judgment according to their intentions. Meaning, this event where the Kaaba is attacked will happen in the end of times. And when the earth swallows uh, them, according to one of the narrations, this is when people will know that this is the Mahdi. Allahu A'lam. But the Quran does indicate, look, don't we will we will humiliate you in this world and the next world if you attack the Kaaba. And Sutilfil. So this is the Sunnahs of Allah. Now how much do we have? Now I've started by saying number one, there is the Lalatun Nas and Hisharatun Nas. The Lalatun Nas is if the Quran would have said the Mahdi will come and these events will happen. The Quran doesn't give us the Lalatun Nas. There's no Sarihul Ilfaz, absolute manifested words in the Quran that say the Mahdi is coming. No. But we know the Sunnah of Allah is the believers when they are true believers. Wala tahinu wala tahzanu. Don't be sad, right? And don't lose hope. Wantum ala alone. You will be most supreme in kuntum mu'minin. If you are truly believers, you will be most supreme. This is true. So, will Islam rise? Will the truth rise? Well, if Islam will rise, to, for Islam to rise, there have to be Muslims that are in the form of a jama'ah with an amir. Okay, and when will this happen? This will happen when Muslims are going to be weak. It's going to reach an ebb. It's going to reach a down point. And from that ebb, there's going to be a rise. And for that rise, there has to be an emir. There has to be a jama'ah. And so, and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make those people that were oppressed the a'immas. And those leaders who become leaders will free the others who are oppressed. This is going to happen. This is the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It doesn't mention Mahdi. But it is ishara to a type of situation of Mahdi. Because this is the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so, when Allah makes them the imams, what are they going to do? They're going to inherit the earth. How are they going to inherit the earth? They're going to inherit the earth because they're going to free people from the bondage and the oppression that they're in. Now, let's continue inshallah. So this verse also is the Anbiya pointing to the Mahdi very clearly in fact or any group of people that rise for the truth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says لَقَدْ وَلَقَدْ كَتَبْنَا فِي الزَّبُورِ We have written it in the Psalms. It's written in the Psalms that the meek shall inherit the earth. It's in there in Psalms. I'll show you if you want. وَلَقَدْ كَتَبْنَا فِي الزَّبُورِ مِنْ بَعْدِ ذِكْرِ And we've already written it in the book of Zabur. Okay? Okay? After uh, the dhikr, okay, after the dhikr of paradise and their different opinions, what is it that Allah wrote? What is it Allah has commanded? The earth will be inherited by who? 
ibadi salihin by our righteous servants. What is the first lesson that we just did in Sutul Qasas in the very beginning here? What does it say? Nuridu an munnu ala ladina yastadifu fil ard. We will do favors for the people that were oppressed in the land. And naja'alahum a'immatan. We will make them the leaders. Wa naja'alahum what? Warithin. We will make them the inheritors. Okay? And so the same thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions here, the exact same thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions here in the Bible and also in Sutul Anbiya. وَلَقَدْ كَتَبْنَا فِي الزُّبُورِ مِنْ بَعْدِ الذِّكْرِ أَنَّ الْأَرْضَ يَرِثُهَا Okay? أَنَّ الْأَرْضَ يَرِثُهَا إِبَادِيَ الصَّالِحِينَ إِبَادِيَ الصَّالِحُونَ Sorry. So now, let me just show you very quickly. So what does Zabur say? Well, Psalms 37, 11 says, But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. So the righteous people, the meek people who are not arrogant, those people that were oppressed, they will be given the inheritance of the earth. All right, let's continue. This is a very deep, Verses of the Quran, which one day I'm going to do a separate episode on. But ayah number 8 says, يُرِيدُونَ لِيُطْفِئُ نُورُ اللَّهِ They want to extinguish the light of Allah with their mouths. Okay. وَاللَّهُ مُتِمُّ نُورِهِ But the truth is going to succeed. The nur will succeed. And their mouths will be shut. And they will become, they will be turned away. وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْكَافِرُونَ No matter how much they're averse to this, their media, their propaganda, their voice, their their blowing with their mouths, their magic, none of that's going to work. Why is it not going to work? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, what? That I sent my messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad for the whole world. And his deen, his deen that he was sent with, the truth has to be established. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, arsala rasulahu bil huda. It is Allah who sent his messenger with the guidance, the Qur'an, وَدِينِ الْحَقِّ And the true deen لِيُذْهِرَهُ عَلَى الدِّينِ كُلِّ To make it dominated over all other systems of life وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْمُشْرِكُونَ No matter how much the uh, idolaters or people of shirk dislike this. This is going to happen. The deen of Allah is going to be established. Now, there's no angels coming to establish this deen. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't do things as just for the sake of doing it because no, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't help us because we need help. Allah wants us to strengthen ourselves. So the ummah will stand on its own feet first. And then Allah will send us help from the heavens. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Look, I have sent my Rasul, my messenger, for what? To make the deen of Allah supreme. Whether you like it or not, that is going to happen. And whether you believe in the Mahdi or not, it's good. there's going to be a jama'ah within Amir that is going to do this. It's going to become very clear after this discussion. But the light of Allah will be completed. The truth will be supreme. The deen of Allah will be established. And if you look at the tafsir of ayah number 9, almost any tafsir book, any, 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 any tafsir book you pick up, pick up 40 tafsir books, almost all of them will mention on ayah number 9 in related to the coming of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. And then what does Allah say at the end of this surah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, what does Allah say? Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu, O you people who believe, kunu ansar Allah, O you who believe, become helpers of Allah. Kama qala Isa ibn Maryam, like Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, lil hawariyyin, he said to his disciples, man ansari ila Allah, who is my helper for the cause of Allah. This is the process. Somebody stands up, you join hands with them, you join a jama'ah, and then this process of standing up for the sake of Allah starts. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts this surah by saying what? Allah starts this surah by saying what? Uh, Allah says, Inna Allah yuhibbu alladhina yuqatiluna fi sabilihi safan ka'annahum bunyanu warsus. Allah loves those people who fight in his path as if they're a solid wall. This is the jama'ah. They're like a solid wall. And, well, then you say, okay, I have to establish the deen. We have to establish Islam on earth, well, how am I going to do that? And the answer of that is given at the end, in Surah Al-Saf. Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu kunu ansar Allah. Oh, you people believe, become helpers of Allah. Kama qala Isa ibn Maryam, like Isa alayhi salatu wasalam said to his hawariyin, to his disciples, man ansari ilallah, who is my helper in the cause of Allah. Qala al-hawariyun, 
the disciples they said nahnu ansarullah fa amana ta'ifatu min bani israil wa kafara ta'ifa so a group of the people of bani israil they believed in a group rejected fa idhan alladhina amanu ala aduwihim fa asbahu dhahirin and a group of them they were given victory because this is the sunnah of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a group of them they rejected the truth and a group of them they were given the victory so what is the lesson here the lesson is that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will establish his deen on earth that's why allah sent his messenger that's why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his messenger so that it can show to the whole world that this is is this is the truth well if that is the case that allah is going to establish his deen on earth which will become more clear in the next coming verses if that is why allah sent his messenger then somebody's going to do this job some leader and some jamaa is going to do this job only question is that if we're going to be part of this if we're going to be part of this history or are we going to be relegated to those people that are blind and didn't become part of it everyone should be able to take part in this at their own level you form a jamaa and then you establish if you make hijra you establish your medina after having hijra where you will go you establish your medina and you wait for the right time So the point being over here I'm only talking about the coming of the Mahdi in the Quran. No there's no dalalatun nas there's no sarihul uh, nas. But there's isharatun nas because we know the deen will be established. Therefore there what? Therefore that means that number 2 we know the oppressed are given leadership. And we know Allah sent his deen to be established, okay? We know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect the Kaaba. Okay. So when a time comes where Muslims are oppressed the Kaaba and Medina are in desolation at that time when they are oppressed and Allah has willed that his deen will be established Allah will give inheritance to the righteous people at that time this is the sunnah of Allah There's no need to ask the question of where is Mahdi in the Quran. Anyone who's a reader of Quran understands that Allah helps the 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 supporters of truth. And this will manifest itself most beautifully in the end of times in the person of Isa, it's not uh, the person of Isa and the person of Mahdi. Because the mention of Isa is mentioned separately. Innahu la'alamu lis-sa'a He is definitely a sign of the hour. Is separately mentioned, and the Isa uh, Mahdi will be part of this process of where the oh, because Isa will be coming from the heavens. He's not directly part of this process, but Mahdi will be directly part of this process where after an ebb there's a rise. And so Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in another place, <coughs> if you look at it over here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in ayah number 55 of surah an-nur nur very important ayah very very important ayah especially in this subject Allah makes a promise wa'da Allahu alladhina amanu minkum wa 'amilus salihat Allah has promised those of you who truly believe and do good deeds la yastakhlifannahum fil ard that I'll give you sovereignty or I'll give you succession and power in the land كما استخلف الذين من قبلكم like it was given to the people before so you will be given khilafa when you don't have khilafa you will be oppressed then you will be given khilafa min qabl there and then the first promise second wala yumakkinanna lahum deenahum alladhi irtada lahum second promise and allah will make allah will establish firmly for them the deen that allah has preferred preferred for them The third promise, ولا يبدلن من بعدهم خ ولا ولا نبدلنهم من بعد خوفهم أمنا. And we will change their state of fear that they were before into a state of peace. Why? Because Islam has been established and peace has been brought. Who will do this? When will is this a promise of Allah that is meant to be unfulfilled, or is this a promise of Allah that is meant to be fulfilled? or is it meant to be a promise that will be never completed no ya'buduna ni wa la yushriku bi shay'in la yushrikuna bi shay'a they will worship me and not do any shirk with me at that time because even the laws will be mine 
No shirk with me even at that level. وَمَنْ كَفَرَ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ But then after that there will be kufr. فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ They will be the wrongdoers. But tell me, is this promise going to come true? If this promise of Allah, that Allah will give the believers who have true iman and have true good deeds and fight against fasad, will Allah give them khilafah on earth? Is it the promise of Allah or not? This is hisharatun nas. There's no ayah here saying the Mahdi will come in this. No. There's, there's dalalatun nas and you can say sarihun nas in the hadith literature. But there's no sarihun nas in the Quran. But the Quran is certainly indicating that Islam will be rising to supreme. To supreme authority. Allah will be given his, his authority. Allah will be given. Allah's laws will be established on earth again. Wa'adallahu and everyone in their own place is responsible for being part of this and to establish this at their own level. Because this promise is open to everyone. But this promise definitely comes true for sure in the case of Mahdi. But we know if you argue, okay, we don't know about that. Okay, but this promise will come true for someone. So, وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ And Allah has promised those of you who truly believe and truly do the right things. لَيَسْتَخْلِفَنَّ He will definitely grant you khilafah like He gave it to the people before. And then, وَلَا يُمَكِّنَنَّ لَهُمْ When the deen will be in danger, Allah will change the state where the deen will be in danger into a state where the deen will be firm and strong. وَلَا يُبَدِّلَنَّ مِنْ بَعْدِ خَوْفِهِمْ أَمْنَا يَعْبُدُونَ And then Allah will change your state of fear which you used to be in into a state of peace. So tell me, if you add all these verses together and add all this logic together, the internal logic of Qur'an, is there a need to say specifically the Mahdi is coming? Or one person who reads Qur'an and knows that there's a battle of truth and falsehood and knows that the truth will eventually win, well, then the other, that means that the truth will win. That means that the believers will win. That means the believers and their leader will win. Okay, let's continue. The, the battle between truth and falsehood is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the very beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I'm not going to show those verses, I'm just going to mention them. Why, that what you, Adam, now go to, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Adam, look, now you and shaitan are an enemy. minha ba'dukum li ba'din adu. You're enemies for one another. Ba'dukum li ba'din adu. Walakum fil ardi mustaqarran. You're going to stay in the earth ilahin, and you'll be given some provisions till a certain time then those provisions and that earth comes to an end and then he's told there'll be people that follow the guidance that Allah sends from time to time and those people that reject it so the battle of truth and falsehood is mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah in the very beginning. And then you find the same thing here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِسْتَحْوَزَ عَلَيْهِمُ الشَّيْطَانِ Shaytan has taken control of them. فَأَنْسَاهُمْ ذِكْرَ الله. And they forgot about the remembrance of Allah. أُولَٰئِكَ هِزْبُ الشَّيْطَانِ These are the part, this is the party of shaytan. This is the party of shaytan. Right? أَلَا إِنَّ هِزْبُ الشَّيْطَانِ هُمُ الْخَاسِرُونَ And know it well. That it is the party of shaitan that is going to be the losers. Okay? They're the khasirun. Inna ladina yuhadun Allah wa rasulahu. Indeed, those who oppose Allah and His Messenger, ulaika fi adhalleen. They will be made the lowest. Well, they're not the lowest today. They're the highest today. What does it mean? It means at some time it will happen. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, La katab Allahu. Allah has written what? Me and my messenger, we have to, what? Prevail. Okay? Me and my messenger, meaning Allah and His messenger, they will be given victory. Meaning when the messenger of Allah comes down, He will be given victory. Okay? Indeed, He is Al-Qawi. He is the one with all power 
and all might. Then what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? <clears throat> In the end of this verse, which is pretty long, Allah talks about the party of Allah and says, Ula'ika Hizbullah, they're the party of Allah. Ala inna Hizballahi humul muflihun. They are the successful ones. Now, what is the point here? The point is that you have to be in the party of Allah. And if you're in the party of Allah, you have to organize yourselves like a solid wall like we discussed. There has to be somebody who says, come help me for the cause of Allah. And people come together and Allah helps them for the cause of Allah. And Allah has promised those who believe and do good deeds, but Allah will give them victory. Allah has promised that he will protect his Kaaba. And Allah has promised in the Quran that those that are oppressed, they will be get made the A'imma. And those people that are made the A'imma will help other people that are oppressed. Is this all not in Quran? Do you need Mahdi? to be specifically mentioned, that all, all these verses of the Qur'an, they will not manifest themselves at some point in history? Of course they will. Now, let us continue. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, how will this party of Allah work? How will this ideal party of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala work? And we must, and one of the things that I feel really in my heart, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet went into details, not just telling of Mahdi, but telling us the organizational structure. It'll be based upon bay'ah, meaning there will be an Amir, which I'll come to in a second. But the first principle of the Hizbullah, of any party of Allah, is, Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu atiullah wa atiyu rasul. O you people who believe, obey Allah and His Messenger, wa lamri minkum, and the leaders amongst you. Okay? وَإِن تَنَعْزَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرَدُّهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ If you disagree about something, return it back to Allah and His Messenger. ذَلِكَ خَيْرٌ وَأَحْسَنُ تَعْوِيلًا This is best for your result and this is the best thing to do. Okay, so the Amir has to be there. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also tells us that how this party has to function. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then tells us it's the Shura. Okay, Allah starts by saying فَمَا أُوْتِيْتُمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ مَتَاءُ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا Whatever you've been given of this world is just a provision of this life. وَمَا إِنْ اللَّهِ خَيْرٌ وَأَبْقَى What is with Allah is much better and much more lasting, meaning the hereafter. لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا عَلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ For the people who believe and they trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who are those? الَّذِينَ يَجْتَنِبُونَ كَبَائِرَ الْإِثْمِ And this is, my dear brothers and sisters, look to the end of times. This is your number one goal. Those who stay away from the big sins, which sins the Prophet has cursed. وَالْفَوَاهِشَ and indecency. وَإِذَا غَضِبُوهُمْ يَغْفِرُونَ And when they are angry, they forgive. وَالَّذِينَ اسْتَجَابُوا لِرَبِّهِمْ Those who answer the call of their Lord. Who is that? When the messenger or person of Allah or a servant of Allah says, Come help me for the cause of Allah, they respond to his call. وَأَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةَ And they established the prayer. وَأَمْرُهُمْ شُورَ بَيْنَهُمْ And their affairs are by mutual consultation. وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ And when they consult, they come to a decision. Now they need to spend their resources to make it come uh, true. وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ And they give in the cause of Allah when after the consultation. And what is this money used for? What is the shura done for? وَإِذَا أَصَابَهُمْ بَغْيُونَ هُمْ يَنْتَصِرُونَ And when someone is wronged, and those who are, when they're wrong, they defend them, themselves. وَجَزَاءُ سَيَّةٌ سَيَّةٌ مِثْلُهَا And remember, when you are going to take uh, action against a wrong, the repayment of a bad deed is equivalent. Don't go excessive. وَمَنْ عَا وَمَنْ عَفَا And whoever forgives وَأَصْلَحَ And makes things right فَأَجْرُهُ عَلَى اللَّهِ Then his reward is with Allah إِنَّ اللَّهِ لَا يُحِبُّ الظَّالِمِينَ Allah doesn't like the wrongdoers وَلَمَنْ تَصَرَ بَعْضَ ظُلْمِهِ فَأُولَيْكَ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنْ سَبِيلِ And as for those who have retaliated after being wronged there's no blame on them But the blame is on who? On the criminal إِنَّمَا السَّبِيلُ عَلَى الَّذِينَ يَظْلِمُونَ النَّاسِ The blame lies on those who have done oppression upon the people. وَيَبْغُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ بِغَيْرِ الْحَقِّ And they've caused aggression in this world without any just cause. أُولَٰئِكَ هُمْ عَذَابٌ عَلِيمٌ For them is a painful punishment. So this is the function of the jama'ah. The jama'ah is there to consult and to make consultation 
And what is their number one as a jama as a community? Their number one concern is dealing with the issue of oppression and establishing the deen of Allah. And so Allah gives them khilafah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them the land. You need to know specifically from the Qur'an that there's a Mahdi coming or not. Don't you see what the Qur'an is saying? You know? Now, let us go to the next verse of the Qur'an. This is a very important verse of the Qur'an to understand something very, very specific. So there's a jama' who Allah gives and chooses and Allah gives them victory and Allah gives them support and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes them the a'imma after being oppressed right then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says inna Allah ashtara min al-mu'minina anfusahum wa amwalahum bi anna lahum al-jannah indeed Allah has purchased the lives of the believers for themselves for their lives and for their wealth, from their wealth Allah owns it all give it to Allah bi anna lahum al-jannah Allah will give you jannah yuqatiluna fi sabilillah they fight in the path of Allah they get killed and they also kill. Again, another promise. This is our promise. It's absolutely true. This promise came in Torah. It came in Injil. And it came in Quran. Now Allah is mentioning Torah and Injil. This has to do with something with the end of times. But I'm not going to go into that right now. What? And then Allah says, وَمَنْ أَوْفَى بِأَحْدِهِ مِنَ اللَّهِ Who can be more true to his promise than Allah? فَاسْتَبْشِرُوا Have good tidings. Over what? بِبَعِيَكُمُ الَّذِي بَعِيَعْتُمْ For the bay'ah that you gave to be part of a jama'ah and to be with the Amir and to fight for the true cause. This is the biggest success. وَذَلِكَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمِ This is the biggest success. Okay, this is the biggest success. So Allah promises, Allah has purchased the lives of the believers. And what is He going to give to them? He's going to give them the biggest success. And Allah says, be happy over the bayar that we're going to give to you. And Allah says, be happy over the victories we're going to give to you. And so to Saf, Allah says, Don't you know how a jama'ah works? And how Allah's yadullahi fawqa al jama'ah? Allah's hand is over the jama'ah? That's, I can show you so many verses on this whole issue. Okay? So now let us uh, continue. Again, in the book of Imam Abu Dawood, in the Kitab al Mahdi, what does it say about him? I want to only emphasize one point here. Bring him out against his will. They will bring him out against his will and will do swear allegiance, give him bayar between the corner and the maqam. Okay? And over here, uh, let me show you. Haribun ila Makkah. He will run to Makkah. فَيَعْتِيهِ النَّاسِ And people will come to him in Ahli Makkah, from the people of Makkah. فَيُخْرِجُونَهُ And they will force him out. وَهُوَ كَارِهُنْ And he'll be disliking it. فَيُبَايِعُونَهُ And they will give him his, their, their bayat to him. They say, no, you have to accept our allegiance. And you have to fight for us now. And we are, now that's how the jama'ah will be. So, not only will the Mahdi's jama'ah be like this, but every authentic jama'ah will have an amir, will have bayat. And every authentic jama'ah will have this this is what Allah will give victory to it's not, it, Islam will not come by individuals Islam will come by group work and Islam will be given uh, uh, victory through group work so some group that in the promise of Allah that Allah has mentioned in the Quran those promises are going to come true but first we have to work on our iman we have to develop fatwa we have to be part of a jama'ah. And we have to make preparations for the time where we have to make hijrah. Because the Prophet was told, when he became a Prophet, the first thing he was told by Warqa bin Nawafil, the cousin of Khatija radiallahu anha, that you will be kicked out. He said, I'll be kicked out. What? I'll ha yeah, because every Prophet was kicked out. Everyone has to do hijrah according to the Qur'an that is in this process of a jama'ah and establishing Islam, you'll either be, you'll either have victory or you'll be kicked out. You'll have to do hijrah. And the situation now is, the situation is going to become so bad, it'll be tyranny in the cities. So you have to make hijrah. Unless you're able to bring Islam completely in one city before that, then that might be an exception. But the point being here is not that right now. My point right now is that there are many 
verses of the Quran that point to the fact that Islam is going to be given victory. And that victory is not going to come without a jama'ah and without an amir and without the Islamic system of organization which has bay'ah in it. Okay, so now let me read to you just one time before I finish all the verses of the Quran that I've talked about in this dialogue inshallah ta'ala and then you can also tell me in your comment section that if these things if these verses come together to point to the fact that there's going to be some guided person and some guided jama'ah that Allah is going to give victory to it sometime so number one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَنُرِيدُ أَن نُمَنَّ عَلَى الَّذِينَ إِسْتَدْعِفُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ and that we desired Allah said that we would do a favor to those people that were oppressed in the land that we will make them the imams and they would be the inheritors okay we will make them the inheritors of the land or we will make them the inheritors of of the of the of the cause of prophethood next verse allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَمَا لَكُمْ لَا تُقَاتِلُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ What is wrong with you? You don't fight in the cause of Allah. وَالْمُسْتَدْعَفِينَ They are weak and oppressed people. مِنَ الرِّجَالِ Amongst the men. وَنِسَاء And amongst the women. وَوِلْدَانِ And amongst the children. الَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا And they say, they do dua for a Mahdi. They do dua for a Wali. Some friend of Allah will come and protect them. And what are they doing? They're fighting. They were oppressed and Allah gave them victory. And now they're fighting for the oppressed. رَبَّنَ أَخْرِجْنَا مِنْ هَذِهِ الْقَرْيَةَ ظَالِمَ أَحْلُهَا Oh Allah, take us out of this city of oppression of its people and its leadership. وَجَعَلْ لَنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ وَلِيًّا Oh Allah, make us for us a wali. Send for us a guardian. وَجَعَلْ لَنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ نَصِيرًا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us support. And so there are two points here. Number one, those that were mustadafeen, when they fight, they'll fight for the mustadafin. Those that were oppressed, and when they're given leadership, they will fight for the oppressed. And number two, that these people are praying to Allah to send to us a guardian, a helper, who will take us from this, this city of oppressors. Who will do that? Okay, next verse. Then we talked specifically about that specific instance where the army is swallowed up. But in the Quran, it doesn't talk about the army being swallowed up. But it does say that we're going to protect our Kaaba. Sutul Fil is there. And then this verse in Sutul Baqarah. وَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّنْ مَنْ عَمَ سَاجِدَ اللَّهِ أَنْ يُذْكَرَ فِيهَا سْمُوَا سَعَا فِي خَرَابِهَا Who is more wrong and oppressive than the one who stops people from the house of Allah? That Allah is mentioned in it. وَسَعَا فِي خَرَابِهَا And they struggle to destroy it. Okay. أُولَٰئِكَ مَا كَانَ لَهُمْ أَنْ يَدْخُلُوهَا إِلَّا خَائِفِينَ It is not for them to enter except in a state of fear. وَلَهُمْ فِي الدُّنْيَا خِزْيٌ وَلَهُمْ فِي الْآخِرَةِ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ And there's humiliation for them in this world, and there's a very painful punishment for them in the next world. Well, then the question then, you know, becomes, uh, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the same point again in Surah Al-Anbiya. وَلَقَدْ كَتَبْنَا فِي الزَّبُورِ And we've written in Zabur, مِن بَعْدِ الذِّكْرِ after the dhikr. أَنَّ الْأَرْضَ This earth, يَرِثُوهَا It will be inherited by the إِبَادِيَ الصَّالِحِينَ My servants that are righteous. Okay? So the same point now. And then we talked about Sutul Saf, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent His messenger and for what purpose? To make the deen of Allah supreme. No matter how much people oppose it, Islam will be supreme. This is a fact. The truth will be supreme. Okay, so Allah will help the oppressed. Then the oppressed becomes leader and help other oppressed. Those people that are oppressed, they pray to Allah, send for us a guide. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to do all these things. Allah sent his messenger to make his deen supreme. No matter how much they, with their media, with their mouths, they try to divert people from this, this is going to happen. Wallahu mutimmu nurihi wa lawkariha al-kafirun. Huwa alladhi arsala rasulahu bil huda wa deen al-haq li yudhirahu ala deen kulli. Allah sent His Messenger with the truth, with, with the Qur'an, with the guidance and the deen al haqq to make it dominant. dominant. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised uh, or gives a stern warning that you better not mess with my Kaaba because it could have devastating effects for you. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse, وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَا يَسْتَخْلِفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ Allah has promised those people believe and do good deeds that Allah will give them... Uh, 
succession in this world. Allah will make firm for them their deen at a time where the fire of Islam, it looks like the light of Islam is going to uh, maybe become extinguished, right? And then no, Allah, but Allah is going to perfect his light, right? And at that time where they were fear will change into peace. This is all going to happen. This is the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we learn what in Sulul Mujadila that there's Hizbul Shaytan and Hizbullah. And there's a clash between them. And then the Hizbul Shaytan is going to lose. And Allah tells us, Obey your Amir. Right? Obey Allah and His Messenger and the leadership amongst you. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Sulul Shura, Look, وَأَمْرُهُمْ شُورَى بَيْنَهُمْ their affairs are by mutual consultation. And what do they do? They spend their wealth for what? To bring and establish justice. Right? And so, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says also what? This, how will this group and the Amir and the Shura, how will they be organized? Then Allah says, فَاسْتَبْشِرُوا بِبَعْيَكُمُ الَّذِي بَعْيَعْتُمْ بِهِ Then, have the good tidings of the bayah that you gave. ذَلِكَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمُ This is the biggest success. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ayah number 112 gives their qualities of these people. This is going to be another subject where I'll go into this in great detail, inshallah, one day. But Allah says, التائبون, the repenting people, عابدون, those people who worship Allah, الحامدون, those who praise Allah, السائهون, those who fast or who journey for the cause of Allah, والراكعون, those who do ruku for Allah, والساجدون, those who do sujood for Allah, الامرون بالمعروف, those who enjoin good deeds for the sake of Allah, والنحاون عن المنكر, and they forbid people from evil deeds for the sake of Allah, والحافظون لحدود الله, and they establish the limits of Allah, وَبَشِّرِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ What is the purpose of the jama'ah? To establish the limits of Allah. What is the purpose of the jama'ah? The joining, the, the bayah is a tawbah. That okay, I'm leaving that world and I'm coming into this jama'ah to fight for the true cause. And what do you do? You, you pray together. You do ruku together. You do sujood together. You enjoin good and forbid evil together. Right? وَلْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةٌ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ Allah says in Sutul Al Imran, Let there be a group amongst you that enjoins to all good. وَلْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ Amongst you. Let there be a group that enjoins to all good. يَدُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ وَيَعْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ And enjoins good. وَيَنْحَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ And forbids evil. أُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِهُونَ They are the people that are successful. Inshallah, one day I'll be talking about those verses too. But the final point I wanted to mention, the link between the Prophet Ibrahim and Prophet Muhammad and the link between Prophet Muhammad and the coming of the Mahdi. That look, Prophet Ibrahim prayed to Allah, Allah, in my family, make some imams. Right? Make some imams. In, this is in Tawbah. Right? I'm going to make you the imam of the people, Allah said. And Ibrahim said, what about my offspring? My promise is not for the people who do wrong, do injustice, no. But it's for the people that do justice. And then it is from that dua that the Prophet Ibrahim did and the other dua, رَبَّنَا وَبْعَثْ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِّنْهُمْ يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيمُ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ That the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ was given to Ibrahim as that Prophet who recites the verses of Allah. Now, every Prophet wishes, according to the Qur'an, and every Prophet wishes that there are people in his progeny who also are doing good. Every Prophet has this wish. Every prophet wishes there will be people after me who will represent what I have. This is a fact. يَرِثُنِي وَيَرِثُ مِنْ آلِ يَعْقُوبِ وَجَعَلْنِي Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Sutul Maryam does the, records the dua of Zakaria. That إِنِّي خِفْتُ الْمَوَالِيَ مِنْ وَرَائِي I fear about what will happen after me. I, I'm so old now. That there can be somebody from my progeny or from my family that will represent Yarithuni wa Yarithu min Ali Yaqub will inherit from me and from the people of Yaqub alayhi salatu wasalam. So every prophet is, where, who is going to be, is there going to be any great people, any people upholding the truth, upholding my inheritance in my family? 
And so we say in the rood of every salah, we say what? We say, Oh Allah, send blessings upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam the way you sent blessings upon Ibrahim and his family. And so when Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam stands before Allah on the Day of Judgment, Ibrahim will be there, Ishaq will be there, Ismail will be there, the children of Ibrahim will be there, behind Ishaq will be Yaqub and behind Yaqub will be Yusuf and, uh, and Daud and Suleiman and all the prophets, they're representing him, these are my children. The Prophet also wants, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, those people in his family who stood up for the truth. Hassan and Hussein died for the truth, radiallahu anhum, huma, radiallahu anhum, from his family. His family suffered great. I can't go into the details of that today, but there will be one from his family, because this is the wish of every prophet that somebody from my family would stand up and establish justice. This is the wish of every Prophet And the Prophet was told that this came true for Ibrahim. And we pray this for Prophet Muhammad But to establish the deen, to be in a jama'ah, to have bay'ah, this is the Islamic method. And to struggle to bring, an, to bring a jama'ah, a community that will enforce the sharia as much as possible, that will create an environment, a society within a society or a society or a jama'ah that gets ready to do hijra accordingly. These are all things that are necessary that according to the Qur'an, every jama'ah that is on haq has to do. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all those good qualities that are supposed to be in the individuals of a jama'ah. And the jama'ah itself have those qualities of standing up for the truth and making those sacrifices and establishing the limits of Allah and enjoining good and forbidding evil and having bayrah and having an amir and having a shura where like-minded people come together for a cause. This is going to happen. There's no need to mention sarahatan or sarihatan that the Mahdi is going to come. Because this is obvious that somebody from the family of the Prophet just like Ibrahim will have to come because this is the wish of every Prophet. But more than that, the Qur'an tells us that those that are oppressed will be given victory. Those that are oppressed, when they're given victory, they were going to help the oppressed. They're going to organize themselves in the form of a jama'ah. They're going to have bay'ah. They're going to have shura. They're going to fight for the truth. This is just the fact. أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات.